welcome to On Location. I'm Missy Tuttle. Many of us have driven by this piece of outdoor art, but did you know there are many more pieces of outdoor art to be seen in the city of Tallahassee? So let's dive in and check them out. We're here with Amanda Thompson of COCA, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the outdoor public art. Thanks so much for joining me today, It's Amanda. my pleasure, Missy. So tell me, what is COCA? COCA is the Council on Culture and Arts. We're your local arts organization. For the last 25 years, we've been providing resources, support, and information to help create a thriving cultural community here in Tallahassee. We are a non-governmental agency, however. We're our own nonprofit, but we work really closely with the city, the county, the state, cultural organizations, as well as the school system. And I'm familiar with the indoor galleries, the one in City Hall and in the airport, but right. What is the new outdoor public art? Oh, I'm so excited to share this with you. It is a brand new effort that we have just launched where we have collected information about all of the outdoor public art in the area. It's spectacular, it's online, it's categorized in three major groups where we can see sculpture, murals and windows, and memorials and monuments. Okay, so I'm familiar with the dolphins, okay. most of us are. Right. But Where's the website that I can go to to find this art? Great question. It's right on our website and you can find it at www.coconet.org slash outdoor art. It's all one word. And this art, is it located just downtown? Absolutely not. It's all over town. We've got pieces of artwork on FSU's campus, FAMU's campus, TCC's campus. It's on the south side of town, in Frenchtown, in Midtown, Northeast, you name it, we've got it. So how many pieces roughly are in this outdoor public art? You'll be amazed. There are over 150 pieces of artwork that we've documented. So what is the role between the city of Tallahassee and COCA? It's a great question. COCA actually contracts with the city of Tallahassee to manage the Art and Public Places program. The city is fantastic about celebrating its art and artists in both the City Hall Gallery and the Airport Gallery. It also has an astounding permanent collection of art, and that doesn't even count the stuff that we see outside all around us. So the exciting component of COCA's new outdoor public art directory is that it includes all of the city of Tallahassee outdoor public art, but also all of the public art that you can see in state locations, on all of the college campuses, and in various areas around town. Well, I'm really excited. Can we go see some of this yeah, art? Yeah, let's do. Okay, great. So Amanda, tell me about this incredibly colorful piece. It's great, isn't it? This is a piece by world-renowned artist Romero Brito. He is well known for his colorful sculptures, his colorful artworks, his playful patterns, and it's a real coup for the city of Tallahassee to have a piece of his. You can find examples of his artwork in some of the most prestigious collections all around the world. This was a gift to the city of Tallahassee in 2005, and it has been proudly situated here since then. And, um, it's become a landmark here on Clayman Plaza and something that um, we sure cherish. Well, it's beautiful and it really makes me want to go to the beach. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. I really like the texture of the metal. looks like a roller coaster. We're here with Mark Dixon at Star Metro. Thanks for coming out, Mark. Can you, you tell me a little bit about your art? Yeah, Missy, this is a piece called Transit. It's a piece that I uh, was commissioned by Star Metro City Tallahassee, which I did for them. The, the interesting piece, uh, interesting part of this piece is that when I pitched the idea, we, we discussed using uh, 
bus parts that were sort of derelict and left over to incorporate those into the sculpture. So we've got, we've got new aluminum that I purchased, but we also have some uh, old aluminum from the buses. For instance, this piece back here, there, there are two bus rims that I cut in half, welded back together, and then put a skin around them. So, so that, that's an aspect of the used bus parts. And then also up here, uh, we've got some pieces from an engine uh, that came off of one of the buses. Uh, some of these, right down here, if you notice this, this, this is uh, part of a hubcap. And then, of course, just the skin of the sculpture itself. Some of the skin is actually old bus panels uh, that we use. So this piece, uh, it's called Transit, and uh, it just represents movement and speed and uh, motion. And, uh, and it's, it's just a, it's an exciting addition, I think, to uh, public transit and to the city's, you know, permanent collection of, uh, of sculpture and art. What do you like best about working with metal? You, you can do just about anything with it. You can take uh, any, any kind of uh, metal and, and weld it together or, or mechanically fasten it, um, and it's just there. Like, this piece will outlive me. If properly cared for, it's metal, it's aluminum, it's non-corrosive, it's got a clear coat finish on it, and it's just there. It's, it's, it's almost permanent. I mean, there is a, there is a lifespan to it, but it's, it just lasts almost forever. I love the nature of it. It's very hard, but it's also very malleable, and, it's, and it, can be, it can be displayed to look soft, and, and it's just a great material. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your contribution to the Outside Art, and thanks for coming out and talking with us today. My pleasure. Anytime. Glad to do it. So Amanda, I've actually used this piece of art as point of reference when I'm giving people directions, but can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I'm hearing that more and more frequently, and that's one of the beautiful things about public art too, is that it really creates a sense of place, and it really kind of puts a stamp on a particular location in any area of town. This piece of artwork has done that exact thing. It's a monumental sculpture by artist John Henry, who's out of Chattanooga. He actually contacted COCA several years ago. He was putting together a statewide art exhibition, and he wanted Tallahassee to be a part of it. So COCA, the city's Parks and Recreation Department, and John Henry all worked together to create this space for Cork and it, you're right, has become a landmark, a point of reference. I see people taking photographs in front of it. I see people eating lunch here. So it really has enlivened this particular part of town, and um, I'm awfully glad it's here. Well, it's definitely impressive. It is impressive. It's over 70 feet tall. It's made out of steel. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> We are here with Deborah LaGrosse on the Tallahassee Community College campus. Deborah, thanks so much for coming out. Can you tell me a little bit about this art? Thank you, yes. Um, the title of this piece is Searching for the Timeless Time. And I just love the title of Searching for the Timeless Time. And for a while, I was working on a lot of pieces that had to do with time. And so this is sort of an eye. It's very abstract. This is kind of the pupil. And on the outside of it is a labyrinth. Um, and also on the inside, there's a mirror, so you can see your reflection inside. And if you open it, there's also a three-dimensional labyrinth that if you peer down into the vortex, which would be like the back part of the muscles and the nerve endings of the eye, you can sort of see a little bit of light inside. So what gives you inspiration in your work? At the time, in the 90s, in the late 90s, I was working with concepts of time, I think because I was realizing that I was getting older and um, time was running out for me. And so um, it's, it, time, I think, is just such a, an interesting concept that we all sort of wrestle with and we deal with. And um, right now, I'm working with um, stones and healing. And so I kind of work through uh, concepts and then I move on. And I think I don't lose those old concepts. I think they sort of stay with me. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Missy.
Now, this doesn't look like your typical sculpture. You're right, these are doors, but they're really special doors. These doors have been carved with a relief, and they are done by an artist named Eric Villanueva. He's out of Orlando, but he comes from the Philippines originally, and he was born into a family of woodworkers. And he's carrying on that tradition here at Mission San Luis. One of the things that's really remarkable about these doors is that it's really the blending of the Spanish settlers and also the Appalachian Indians. And we see in these relief panels different aspects of that blending. We've got trade and commerce represented. We've got military life. We've got leisure and recreation. We've even got farming and ranching. That's my favorite panel right over here. I love that chicken. One of the other things that's sort of interesting about these doors is that there's a link with public art to education. It's one of the great things about public art is that it allows children and adults to be curious and to use their imaginations. In this case, we also have a cultural and historical significance that makes that information much more meaningful to children when they're learning about it in school. They can actually come here, see and touch the representation of all that they're learning about in school. And I think that that makes these pretty special. This detail is amazing. What kind of wood is this? It's exquisite. This is Honduran mahogany. And the thing that's sort of great about that is that it just exemplifies the fact that there are so many different diverse mediums that are represented on COCA's Outdoor Public Art Directory. We've got pieces made out of steel, made out of wood, made out of um, bronze, things that are painted, things that are made out of glass. We've even got things that are made out of styrofoam. <laughs> Welcome back to On Location. We've been visiting some outdoor public art, and now we're gonna take a look at some murals. Amanda, tell me what I'm looking at here. Hey, Missy. This is a great new piece of artwork that we've just installed on Gain Street. This is a piece by artist Susan Stelsman and also by Big Ben Poet Laureate, Mary Jane Riles. This is unique in the fact that it's got visual elements as well as literary elements. The other thing that makes this piece especially unique is the fact that it's site specific. This is a location that the city had designated as one that was meant to protect this heritage oak just behind us. And knowing that this would be a large retaining wall, the city with its commitment to public art really wanted to invite artists to come up with proposals to come up with an application for this wall. It was installed in August of last year, so it's become quickly a favorite in this particular part of town and one that I adore. As you can see, we've got lots of texture and the materials that they've used are really unique. We've got ceramic, pieces, each one of these acorns was hand sculpted. Wow. Each one of these leaves was also hand sculpted. And the thing that's incredible about these is that they have not only a layer of glaze, but also a layer of glass. So it makes it extra sparkly. Then we've got this fantastic textural bark. And all of these elements together, of course, are meant to signify the beauty of this heritage oak that we're trying to preserve with this particular application. Mary Jane Riles then came up with a beautiful poem, again, that references the tree, its lifespan, and why we're trying to preserve and celebrate our natural beauty with 
created beauty. And that's really kind of neat because Gain Street, known for its art, was this was installed for the opening of phase one of the new revitalized Gain Street. Yeah, you got it. And that's one of the beauties about public art is that you can bring art into a community that you're trying to inject some energy and some life into. It makes it a desirable place to live, a desirable place to work, and it enriches everyone's life who comes into contact with pieces like this. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. I think so too. Well, Amanda, obviously we're in Railroad Square. The entire area is colorful, but this looks different than what we've been seeing. This is different, and if you want different, you come to Railroad Square. This is the Artist's Enclave here in Tallahassee, and it is chock full of murals and sculptures, all of which can be found on COCA's Outdoor Public Art Directory. Um, many of the sculptures here in Railroad Square are done by well-established professional artists who are really into their careers. But we've also got examples of emerging artists who are young, just starting to find their style, find their feet, and figure out where they fit into public art. And those can also be found on COCA's Outdoor Public Art Directory. And we're actually standing in front of a couple of examples right now. This is by an artist named Robbie Goethe. He's, again, a young emerging artist, just starting to kind of figure out where he fits into all of this. This is a piece by Matt Shanigan. The piece down at the very end is also a piece by an emerging artist named Cosby Hayes. The two pieces in the center are actually much older and they are probably going to be repainted in the next few weeks or so. So again, this is an area that is constantly changing, constantly evolving, and it's never the same experience twice. And they have a huge canvas to paint on. They do. <laughs> they really do. It's um, so exciting to see what these young artists are going to come up with next and um, we'll probably at some point say we knew them when. I can't wait to see what's next. Exactly. Wow, just looking at this mural makes me want to sing and dance. Now this is a colorful mural. It is, isn't it? The thing that's unique about this mural is that it's actually just outside of an individual business. And on COCA's Outdoor Public Art Directory, we have lots of examples of local businesses who are showing their commitment to public art on the building facade itself. One of the great things about public art is that it can be an economic engine. I personally am really committed to shopping locally. and when I see that there's a business who is equally committed to promoting public art, it makes me want to shop there even more. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Amanda, where are you taking me? Okay, so we're at the Museum of Florida History and I'm taking you to the ground floor where there's a secret mural. So Missy, this is what I wanted to show you. This is really amazing. It's great, isn't it? So this is an example of public art that's done as a collaborative effort. A lot of the artworks that we have on the public outdoor art directory are by individual artists, but this was actually done by a group of people, a lot of kids and adults working together to create this amazing depiction of prehistoric Florida. And I didn't even know it was down here. Surprise! This is a beautiful stained glass window. Isn't it gorgeous? We're at the Big Bend Hospice 
and this is an example of a stained glass window wall. Remember, COCA's public outdoor art directory is broken up into three major categories. We've got sculpture, murals and windows, monuments and memorials. So this obviously falls into the mural window category. So this particular piece of artwork was created by Joanne and Bob Bischoff, local glass artist extraordinaire. And the subject matter is actually an oak tree, which is the symbol for Big Ben Hospice. Um, you can see that the color palette that's used are cool blues and greens and purples, which really creates the sense of calm. And when the light comes through, it shines into this interior meditation room, which is for clients and family members to relax and enjoy in. But we can enjoy this piece of artwork from the outside as well. Well, it's really beautiful from the outside, so I can just imagine how beautiful it is on the it's inside. A special treat for clients and family members. It's very nice. Yeah. Thanks for staying with us. Now we're going to visit some memorials. Hey Amanda. Hey Missy. Well this piece is really subtle. Can you tell me about this area? I'd be happy to. This entire area is actually dedicated to the memory of United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Daniel Chairs. Um, it may seem a little bit unusual for its location, but Daniel's mother, Nana Kutchins, is an alum and also a longtime and beloved faculty member here at the College of Nursing. So when Daniel died, this was something that they really wanted to do to help preserve his memory. Um, even though this space is dedicated to an individual, it's really representative of all the sons and daughters who won't come home from war. It's a space to have some contemplative thinking. It's a place also for healing, which makes it a perfect fit for the College of Nursing. We're here in the Capitol Courtyard and I'm with Michael Jernigan. And Michael, thank you for joining me. Can you tell me a little bit more about this memorial? The memorial started out as a project to honor the fallen law enforcement here in Florida. And I did a maquette first, maquette being a small scale model. And this maquette was created up on the, the fourth floor of the Capitol during a legislative session. And the uh, Florida Police Benevolent Association saw what I was doing and we worked together for a while and then they commissioned a life size of that memorial. This maquette is set up for the visually impaired to come up. It has braille print explaining the memorial and then raised lettering for those who are visually impaired but not blind. And they're allowed to touch this in order to technically see the sculpture that's over to the side. Uh, the Officer Down Memorial is set up uh, with an officer down, you don't know why, you don't see any blood or guts or anything, but you have a fellow officer who is calling in on the radio, officer down. And as she's doing so, she's looking over at the 
uh, Fraternal Order of Police's memorial, which has the names of all the fallen law enforcement in Florida. And they engrave a new set of names every year. If you notice on the face of his watch, instead of a time, it has EOW, meaning end of watch. His gun is still strapped in, but hers has been released to kind of give that there is some action between him down and her coming on scene and then basically representing the fallen law enforcement in Florida. Inside the sculpture are time capsules that family members uh, from the past have sent in and they are preserved inside so that if this is ever taken apart or uh, fixed in any way, those time capsules could be open and continue to tell the story and the legacy of those heroes. And what was your inspiration to actually start this memorial? A gentleman named Denny Wood, who is a uh, disabled individual, is a lobbyist for the disabled um, people in, in Florida, actually came up and said, you know, I've walked by the uh, memorial out there for the fallen law enforcement, and I've just never paid any attention to it. it it's not an eye catcher. There's like a, a tombstone and then the names around the base, but it just doesn't tell me anything. And I wonder if we could do a sculpture that would bring out, uh, capture people's attention and then draw them over to see what the memorial is about. Well, I'm sure everybody who unfortunately is associated with this appreciates the memorial. And thank you so much for coming out and talking with thank us Thank you, today. Missy, I appreciate it. A unique way to recognize the men and women of the Tallahassee Fire Department. Well, we're here at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and we sure have seen a lot of art today. We have, Missy, but we have barely even scratched the surface, which is why COCA was really wanting to create this outdoor public art directory. We've done all the hard work for you. It's accessible in one place, right at your fingertips. And with the map feature, if you're interested in a specific piece of artwork, it's easy to locate so that you can explore it on your own. The directory is for residents who have ever asked themselves, I wonder who painted that mural that I pass every day on my way to work, or when did that sculpture get there? It's for visitors who want to learn about Tallahassee historical figures or events. It's for families who are looking for things to do with their kids. How fun would a public outdoor art scavenger hunt be? <laughs> It's also interesting for educators to access because they can use it to incorporate more art into their classrooms and curriculums. In addition, I think arguably one of the most important factors of public art is all about accessibility. It's really a way to level the playing field. Regardless of your financial background, your education level, your cultural background, you have access to all of these amazing pieces of artwork. You know, they allow us to open our minds, encourages us to ask questions, and it enriches our quality of life. So be sure to visit COCA's online outdoor public art directory and visit some art today. Thanks for watching. For WCOT, I'm Missy Tuttle, and we'll see you next time somewhere on location.